Welcome back to the battlefield. Picking up right where we left off in the previous episode, we are working on eliminating the Indians. It's been slow progress. We've had a major holdup with the supply situation in Parsa. But we are geared up and ready, hopefully, to start making the attack again. So before I jump into that battle, let me just take a look around and make certain everything else is in order. Alright, so in one more turn, this army will arrive at Hecatompolos. In the meantime, I think I need to send this army back to Raga. Just to help balance out the public order there. Alright, so we're ready to go. These guys can also patrol this turn. Ready to go over here. All of these armies are in position. Down here, these guys are holding a defensive pattern. I would like to send one of them back soon, but let's just see how this battle plays out first. So, strategy going into this. Their garrison is really weak, and all of their units will be coming in as reinforcements. So what I could potentially try is to have my initial attacking army just sit right on the border of the map and try and catch these guys as soon as they come in. But I really don't think that's going to work to my advantage. So we might have to, well, I don't know, let's see. Maybe I'll just try and get in the city and see what happens. I definitely want the army with the pikes and the artillery to initiate the attack, just so they don't have to do quite as much moving. Let them cower before our might! We fight for you, my Advance! Alright, now what are we up against? A bunch of crummy spears. I need to double check what that unit is. It looks like they're just a standard spear unit. This army, they don't have any elephants, which is good, but they do have that general's unit, which is like 60 chariots, which is a lot of chariots to deal with. Other than that, it's just a colossal amount of infantry. Most of them are medium infantry, so that'll actually take a while to cut my way through. Over here, they do have some elephants, all right. So I have a bit of a cavalry concern because of the elephants and chariots. What I'm hoping is the elephants, or the chariots at least, and the rest of the cavalry will get up to me while I'm fighting the garrison, and all of the infantry will be too slow to catch up. All right, let's get in there. Because what I'm kind of thinking I want to do, all oh, these Ass hats are sallying out. That ruins my whole plan. What I was going to do is try and get into the city and then just hold choke points with my pikes. But since they're sallying out, freaking losers, it actually bothers me how often the AI sallies out from settlement battles in DEI. Well, since they're sallying out, that changes the plan a little bit. Instead of being able to force my way through that initial army and then just hold some choke points with the pikes, now I think what I need to do is probably just take a position up on this hill. Because that'll afford some protection to my flank. It'll let my reinforcements come in slightly on the enemy flank. Hmm. Yeah, let's try and take a defensive position up here. Now, I'm going to have to reposition because I want to make the most out of this terrain. Absolutely cannot have my skirmishers firing at will on this battle. Alright, here's another bit of a natural choke point I can use. 
So if I can get my scorpion just on top of the hill there, that'll give them a nice, easy fire arc pretty much anywhere they want. Do you know what I could do is just set up between these instead? What I was planning on doing is kind of forming a line here, but I could maybe just set up between these hills. I don't think I can get a scorpion up on top of here, but it's maybe worth a shot. We'll try it. Got to have at least one unit of spears out here to hold this flank, and you know what? I'm actually just going to make it both of them. The pikes will do just fine in the center for the beginning. My reinforcements can cover the left flank. I can also start off with cavalry on the left flank just in case they charge really fast. I'm going to leave this general over here on the right flank because there is actually still a lot of space over here that they could try and get around me. Alright, now if that's everyone, make sure the artillery isn't going to fire at will and they aren't going to move without me telling them. Now let's roll up here and see what kind of angle we can get. Our reinforcements have arrived. Let's actually set the pikes up just below. Down here like this, I think. The slingers can kind of sit in between like that. Alright, now I have a massive cavalry force in this battle. And I am not particularly good at commanding cavalry. I should probably be telling my guys to get their asses over here, though. Alright, here's the play. We're gonna bring all of the cataphracts over here. Dude, this is so many horse archers, I don't know what to do. <laughs> this is insane. I might have to do the unthinkable and establish some control groups. Alright, they are charging pretty quick, but none of this stuff is like high threat. enemies, so I'm not really concerned about rushing over there to deal with them. Go ahead and get these guys back here. Right now, interestingly, the AI is actually just entirely avoiding my fighting position. Let's take the Axemen off of fire at will and throw them into the reserve. Bring the spears over here as well. All right, now let's see. Let's just disengage for the time being. Maybe we can get them to attack by shooting at them a little bit. Or maybe, maybe just running away a little bit will be enough to get them to charge us. To actually have this unit turn a little bit. Any damage I can do to these chariots right off the bat is good damage. I don't need to shoot any of these light spears, but the chariots, they would be great to get rid of. While they're in range, let's try and get a couple more hits, because it looks like the AI is moving away to try and regroup. 
So let's just do a little bit of damage while they're still here. This is actually a perfect opportunity to charge the... horse archers up here. Now I think I actually need to split them up a little bit just so that they're not getting stuck on each other because I feel like when the cavalry is moving this close together it actually really slows them down because the units will kind of get inside each other like that. Alright, general's pretty much out of range. What did we manage? We did some actually really good damage to their chariots. My horse archers, I believe, outrange anything they have. So let's just go ahead and keep chasing them. Wipe out a couple of these skirmisher units. Alright, now here we go. They're starting to turn back around. What kind of damage have we done so far? Actually, a decent amount. That's good. While we can, let's just hit some of these light spears in the back. I know they're a bit of a meat shield, but let's just do some damage while we can get it for free. Gotten some decent kills there. Let's have these guys try to take out the chariots as much as they can. I don't know how effective they'll be against the chariots, but we can give it a shot and see what happens. Alright, even better, they're sending some cavalry after me. more effective ways to get rid of enemy horse cav, or enemy horse cav, wow, <laughs> why do I talk? <laughs> One of the more effective ways to get rid of them is to have your own skirmish cav go into melee mode, put them on fire at will, and then just give them a melee charge order. All right, so they're sending a lot of force out and around this side. Let's get ready for them. Try and lock down that whole side of the map if we can. All right, let's get the cataphracts involved here. Now the idea here is charge them with the unit that they are not charging. just because then they don't get a charge bonus at all. Okay, scorpions don't seem to do much to elephants, which is disappointing. Like, in my brain, that should be one of the better units at dealing with elephants, is a scorpion. Okay, you guys move over to this side. This is gonna hurt, but not for me. Bring the cataphracts out here. They've got a lot of stuff going this way, so I think we're going to have to move the axemen up here. I'm kind of disappointed myself for not protecting the flank of my pikes better. Um, there's an opportunity here to catch some missile units, so let's do that. 
Okay, I could charge into this, but for now, we're looking okay. You guys just need to haul ass down here as quick as you can. Okay, General, go hold them off. I know those guys are good against cavalry, but I've got to do something to hold them off. How are we looking over here? Archers, go to town. You guys get in there, you guys start going to town. Alright, so we got into their back lines with the horse archers. Took out a couple of units, now it's time to get out of there. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Need to bring a bunch of cavalry back over this direction because they're starting to swarm out around my flank. Time for the general to leave that fight. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Oh, there's so much going on. Alright, this unit of horse archers is probably dead. That's just raw, unadulterated micro error. Come on, you guys can get out of there, I believe. Okay, axes, reform. We're gonna need more bodies here in the middle soon. Yep, these guys are going to break. Hopefully they can get out of there before it happens. But I'm not really counting on it. Right now, I just need the horse archers to keep the rest of their army busy. I don't need them to really do any fighting. One of our units has used all its ammunition. You guys go ahead and charge in there. Yeah, let's start wrapping up the flank. My pikes are holding okay. Things could be better though. We do have to remember that they've still got a bunch of infantry coming in. Or they have a bunch of units coming in. Alright, General, keep you close by. What's happening over here? Alright, we can get around them over here. Oh shit! I didn't think they could do that. Scorpion, run! I didn't realize I'd left a gap there. I thought I had it all covered. Okay, so they're getting a good charge on me there. That's bad. Okay, front line's holding up. How's everyone else doing? Oh, okay. See, here's, here's how you deal with these guys. You get a unit of horse archers that has ammo, which none of mine do anymore. Okay, these guys. And then you just tell them to chase. How are these guys doing? They're doing okay. I'm really annoyed that they got into my back lines like this. My spears are actually winning somehow, which is insane to me. Cavalry, keep doing your thing. We'll try and send someone out here to help out. You guys go chase down those guys. It's just too much cab for me to manage. Lots of routing units to chase here. All 
Alright, we're starting to wrap them up. Need to get the cataphracts out of here and get the axemen in here. Everyone on the front line's holding out okay. Slinger's just decided to do some weird shit over there. One of our units has used all its ammunition. This is just way too much for me to manage. <laughs> Way too much. Alright, we'll start using the infantry to run the flanks instead of the cavalry. Except over here we can use the general. I'm not sure. Okay, so these guys ended up on the front line mixed in with some pikes. That's okay. It's not ideal, but it's okay. It'll do for now. You guys just keep chasing them. Can you guys turn and hit in that area? Okay, this is good. We're getting plenty of time to run these guys down. This is bad because they're getting plenty of time to catch me off guard. <laughs> it's so many units. Alright, we'll do this. We'll send that unit out to help out. Once they're pinned down, then we can then we can do some more with it. You guys go ahead and chase that. Definitely need to get some melee infantry over here to help out. Generally, you can actually go chase them down. Archers, you can cease fire. No, you can just hit this blob. Right, how are we doing at running them down? Looks like we're doing okay. The enemy general is dead. And we're gonna see mass routes soon. make sure we have some cavalry here to capitalize on it. And there they go. Alright, so that was crazy. I didn't take nearly as much damage as I thought I would, though, given how bad my micro was. Somehow this scorpion unit actually survived. This scorpion used all of its ammo, but probably mostly just did friendly fire. Oh my goodness, that was a lot to do. Alright, let's try and have the cavalry do as much of the killing as possible here, because I actually want the cavalry to get the experience. The infantry is going to get replaced soon anyway, at least hopefully soon, so I don't need them to get the experience. Alright, what other cavalry units are just hanging out? Absolutely run down as much as we can. That's just best practice for beating the trash out of your enemies, is don't let them escape when you have the upper hand. It's obvious, but whatever, I don't know. Sometimes I just ramble.
All right, well, having a ton of cavalry and then a small but strong infantry force is absolutely devastating. Because there was basically no chance I was going to lose the cavalry engagement. And to win the infantry engagement, all I had to do was hold out for One a little bit, which pikemen are really good at that. All right, anyway, let's end the battle. All right, so they left that battle with, what, just under 800 men remaining? So we killed 90% of their men all in one go. One thing I love about having heavy horse archers is you can kind of just use them as melee cav and just leave them on fire at will. And then while they're running around, they'll just shoot stuff. And it's really, really nice just because it's extra damage, it's free damage potential that they can actually capitalize on without too much micromanagement. And as we can see, micromanagement is not my strong suit, <laughs> so definitely helpful to have units that can kind of do their own thing. Alright, so we pretty much wiped out everything they had. Now, the city doesn't have buildings that are useful for me. Um, public order is okay, I think I'm just going to raise the settlement. Just burn it down and start fresh. And now that I have two armies here and they're both healthy after that battle, I'm confident that I can hold on to this territory. Now, since replenishment has been such a problem, before anything else, I'm actually going to get this general down the replenishment option. These guys... I could actually go chase and destroy these armies completely, but I just don't think it's worth it. I wouldn't really gain anything by doing that. Um, I'm going to leave this army on the backside of the city in the hopes that if they counterattack, they will attack the city, not the army. Alright, these guys are still taking attrition. I think I already moved this army this turn, so that should be all I have left to do, right? And now that we've eliminated the threat here, we can actually drop both of these armies back and have them start replenishing immediately, instead of waiting. So, let's do that. It's probably best that I keep at least one army here, just in case there's armies hidden just outside my line of sight that come and attack here. These guys are replenishing. Let's go ahead and boost that just a tiny bit by putting them in the patrol stance. Alright, well, that was a good battle. Unfortunately, I didn't get like any cool close-ups or anything just because there was too much for me to manage. But, you know, I hope it was still enjoyable to watch. You guys can kind of see my thought process going into these fights. And you can see how scattered I get <laughs> once the fighting actually happens. But, alright, things look good. We're under control. And we are making an offensive push again. It has been too long. And at this point, I don't even know if I'm going to need the baggage train down at Parsa. I think I realized the problem way too late.
I've just realized I should have moved my spy. I kept them there because I thought they were deployed. But when I took that city, it undeployed them. So I should have moved them forward at the end of that turn. That's fine. You can do some recon all you want. Important character, you say. Adopt him. And then have him throw money at people so they stay happy. And then give him a mistress so he can gain some influence over each turn passively. Alright. We're under control. I feel obligated to build this here now. Looks like we didn't really get any replenishment over the end turn, but that's fine because we still have plenty of strength left. Let's send this army. Oh, unfortunately, this army doesn't have the movement range to get out of this settlement. Well, Let's see, what do the supplies look like here? Negative 103 supplies, wow. Well, either way, let's send them back so that at least next turn they can start to replenish. We'll send this army back forward to make sure the city has at least some form of defenses available. Fight for you, my lord. It'll take me two turns to get back there to replenish, but that still probably will be faster than sitting here waiting for replenishment. None of their armies have the movement range to counterattack. No At least not immediately. Swift and silent. I cannot do as you ask. All right, well, as it turns out, maybe the supply chain, supply train, maybe that will still be a good thing, but for now, let's just go ahead and actually, let's get as much movement south as we can, or is it just going to be slower to go that way? Yeah, we'll just go ahead and keep them here on the border. As soon as that becomes available. You know what I could do? I could swap this, these guys out for some legionary spearmen. And then have this army take the supplies down, but whatever. Just because these guys are designed to deal with Parthia. And that's why, like, that's the whole reason I recruited them in the first place. So I don't want them to be moving all the way down here to move supplies. Because that will mean command. they're out of position. Um, why don't we just do this? Have an extra horse archer. On the move, my lord. And then you guys you, can pop over advance. here. Do that! And then next turn recruit, and then run on down to bring some supplies this way. Interestingly, oh, okay, at first this army wasn't showing that it was taking attrition, but as soon as I clicked on it again, it started showing the attrition. Alright, let's get some more food going. I've spent pretty much all of my money now. But, since we're back in the territory of making progress, I think that's okay. My armies are going to start paying for themselves now, even though I realistically have too many. So, let's take a final look around at the diplomatic and political spheres. Make sure everything at least looks somewhat managed.
Um, I could... Yeah, I could probably trade with these guys, right? To receive this embassy. And if they pay me for it, even better. To all you have to say. Perfect. The gods of Olympus rejoice when men show such good sense. We have an accord. All right, well, let's go on to the next turn. And I'll probably end this episode here. We're making slow progress, but we are starting to move forward again now that we've got enough troops in position to actually make an offensive instead of just having to hold our ground. The only question now is can I get supplies to these armies before they die of attrition? <laughs> and it's looking like I should be able to. I wasn't ever really that worried of them dying to attrition, but that would be a bad way to go, to lose all of those really expensive and reasonably good troops with some veterancy. To lose them to a lack of supplies would be a catastrophic failure on my part as their leader, their fearless leader. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. Speaking of supply chain, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. As always, I hope you guys are enjoying, and I will see you in the next one.